You're listening to the Fierce Fatty Podcast, episode 131. Help, I'm surrounded by fat phobes. I'm your host, Vinnie Wellsby. Let's do it. Perfect. I'm Victoria Wellsby, TEDx speaker, best selling author, and fat activist. I have transformed my life from hating my body with desperately low self-esteem to being a courageous and confident, fierce fatty who loves every inch of this jelly. Society teaches us living in a fat body is bad, but what if we spent less time, money and energy on the pursuit of thinness and instead focused on the things that actually matter, like if pineapple on pizza should be outlawed or if the mullet was the greatest haircut of the 20th century. So how do you stop negative beliefs about your fat body controlling your life? It's the Fierce Fatty Podcast. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to this episode. How you doing? How's life? You feeling good? I'm feeling good. Are you feeling good? Hey, I got a couple of um, recommendations for you for stuff to watch that's fat positive. Um, Might be behind the times on this one. (laughs) Well, actually, no, it came out 2022, 2022 this year. So um, it's called Somebody Somewhere, starring... Bridget Everett. It's a comedy drama. And in Canada, I watch it on Crave, which is which has HBO. So wherever you watch HBO stuff, then you should be able to find it. And Bridget, Bridget Everett is a fat um, actor. She's 50 years old. And this... Like, I'd seen this advertised and I was just like... Eh, what is this and it took me a few times to want to watch it but it was so good I like watched the whole first season there's only one season so far in like three minutes it was it was that good it's just so endearing no um no fat negativity really um just she's a cool person just living life and she happens to be fat it's really good it's really it's really good and we have also a trans actor in the the main the main cast there as well so yeah it's it's cool and so you might know Bridget Everett from uh Patty Cakes so Patty Cakes is a movie um I guess it's came out in like 2018 I think um, which stars Danielle McDonald, which you should, you probably recognize. You probably recognize these people. Um, Danielle McDonald stars in Patty Cakes. Danielle McDonald was also in Dumplin with Jenna, Jennifer Aniston. And so Danielle McDonald in Patty Cakes. If you haven't seen Patty Cakes, go watch it. It's so good. Um, that was on, ooh, you can watch it on Disney Plus, is what Google is telling me. You can watch it on Disney Plus. So, um, and the music in it's so good. P A T T I C A K E Dolly signs. Patty cakes. Patty cakes. Patty. Yeah, it's really good. It's a really good. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen Dumplin', that's probably like a, that's a really pop- popular one too. Uh, anyway, fat stuff. Fat stuff. But uh, somebody somewhere on Crave slash HBO, wherever you get Crave HBO, starring Bridget Everett. I'll put it in the show notes just in case you forget and you're like, what the fuck were they talking about? So um, you can always find the show notes at fearsfactory.com forward slash podcast or for this episode it's 131. Also, just an FYI, as a reminder, you can also get a transcript for every single episode. That's a lie. I am boldface lying for (laughs) every new episode. And also we're working on doing transcripts for the old episodes and we're almost done. So we're doing three transcripts a week. and so we're like back to like episode 
30 or 20 so and then the first 10 episodes i think had transcripts so we're almost done of every single episode so i'd say 90 percent of episodes have transcripts so um tell your friends if they want transcripts if you want a transcript we've got transcripts there in the show notes for satisfactory.com forward slash podcast or for this episode 131 so yeah so talking about podcasty thing i was having a dinner i had dinner with him on monday at a gorgeous mexican restaurant with summer in and in you may know summer friend of the show also friend of mine in real life um and she has a podcast too which is really good go check that out it's called eat the rules uh and we were she had texted me uh, the day of um this screenshot of a of a, a review that someone had had left for her podcast one of the episodes that remember we did like death to diets which was six episodes where we were kind of testing something out um and uh we had an episode about jvn um jonathan van ness and their supposed sugar addiction jvn uses he him them they uh i think she as well pronouns let's see he him i know for sure and they them i know for sure maybe she her um oh do you know what jvn blocked me (laughs) jvn blocked me Uh, (laughs) oh shit because of that episode (laughs) jvn i can't click on this thing to tell you what is (laughs) if he uses she as well as they and he (laughs) oh dear oh dear uh because i uh, jvn J, jvn who, whoever um criticized jvn for that there was a super fat phobic episode he did with get, getting curious and some fat activists call it called him out and he blocked them all <laughs> he blocked us oh which is sad i mean come on now come on come on but i mean fuck it if i was him i'd be blocking us as well not that we did it said anything wrong um but uh yeah because i probably be like i haven't got time for these fucking bitches these idiots whatever um anyway in the episode with jvn we were just saying how a sugar addiction isn't a thing and um jvn sounds like it sounds like they have struggled with um being in diet culture and being fat phobia and uh they had a meeting with a well, I don't know what she called herself. I think she was she might have been a dietitian, something like that, some sort of food professional. And he was saying that food addiction is is real, and told JVN that he had um, sugar addiction uh, with some <laughs> with some very dubious science. Anyway, so someone had sent in a review for Summer's uh, podcast saying that um, the lines of I came here to listen to um, stuff to help me feel good about my body and um, they just made fun of the, uh, let's say they're a dietitian, uh, the dietitian because she was thin and made fun of her thin body and I'm here to get um, to love my body and they're just making fun of thin people. And we were, Summer and I, we were like texting back and forth, kind of laughing, laughing about the um, thin fragility the uh, thin fragility in that that um that review and then when we had dinner on monday night we were like i wonder what's going on though behind it like what's going on behind this person is mad um because we were laughing because it's kind of like what (laughs) we didn't make fun of the dietitian for being thin we uh, what summer said was uh the so the dietitian was like obviously in diet culture and in um in, in, in fat phobia and believes that sugar addiction is a thing. And in summer, um, I said, oh, she wasn't very friendly either. She wasn't very entertaining, right? So if you're gonna be on TV, you might as well also be like entertaining and and, and interesting and funny or something, you know, um, but she wasn't very entertaining. And, and summer said, yeah, she's probably hungry. And um, that was a good old knees up. Yep, she's probably hungry because she's in diet culture. She's she's uh, restricting food. She's not eating enough food. She's not eating any sugar. Whereas we think that this person think thought that we were making saying she's hungry because she's thin. Um, like we, Summer and I didn't even connect to that because something that we realized we were talking about was that for people who are new to anti-diet, um 
fat positivity, they might hear Summer or I or anyone else talking about thinness, talking about whiteness, and think that we are talking about individual people and not structures, systems of oppression. And we could be talking about individual people who are buying into structures of oppression. So this dietitian was buying into, um, you know, fat phobia diet, diet culture and the and the privilege that comes from being thin, right? Um, but like that's that's kind of like to us a given, and to people who've probably listened to our podcast for a while, like that's a given. We're talking about the structure of privilege in this instance, thinness. And we're not talking about how thin people are bad or thin people are unattractive or thin people are need to be, you know, thrown into outer space or something. Thinness, the concept of thinness as a superior body type and as a way to oppress others, that system should be thrown into space, but not thin people. The ideology you know the oppressive ideologies and so we were like oh shit yeah like eh, you maybe we need to be more explicit and also this is a shit ton of you know thin fragility of there's no way in the world um that, that simmer and i would make fun of someone for their body size i mean come on <laughs> come on nah. like that's what we were like what <laughs> what do you mean we were like is making fun of this person for their her body size. I was like, that doesn't that doesn't make sense. And then we looked into it, and it's like, oh, I can see why someone might think that question mark. But uh. anyway, so long story short, just saying, um, just an FYI, that always we're talking about. Well, I'm talking to talk for myself. I I'm talking about. Um, you know, if I'm talking about thin privilege, I'm not saying thin people need to, to go away and die, you know? I'm not saying that white people need to go away and die. Um, just, you know, the idea of, of whiteness or thinness or able-bodiedness as a superior quality of a human. Yeah, no! Anyway, something else that someone said, uh, because I was like, where did you find this review? Because I don't go, I, I don't normally go and check reviews unless I've asked you lot to do a review and then I'll go and see if you've done it. And you certainly do, thank you. And um, anyway, she says she's got some, there's a thing that you can go and look at your reviews around for the world. I keep forgetting about it. It's called Chartable in case you have a podcast or you want to go and nosy on other people's podcasts. But reviews from around the world because Apple Podcasts are super annoying. They only do regional reviews and so if you live in i don't know uh one country you can only see the reviews from that country so anyway so i've just gone and checked out my most recent reviews thank you so i'm going to read out a few of them um so reviews for fierce valley podcast uh entertaining and thought-provoking vinnie's narration is so so in capitals entertaining that it captured my attention and kept me listening and before long, I was learning and becoming more and more supportive of, of fat acceptance. Love it. Thank you so much for the podcast and highly recommend to anyone. And that is from someone who lives in Japan. Amazing. Konnichiwa. Genki desu ka? Domoregato Anata wa subarashi? Jane matane. That is... I uh, studied j- Japanese and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, that was hello how are you thank you you're awesome see you later see you later crocodile I didn't say see you later crocodile I just said see ya um, so I get out my my little bit of Japanese that I remember for that uh, Japanese this that review from Japan super cool okay uh, another review is from Denmark I'm a Danish lish, lish, listener, listener, and I'm so glad that I found this podcast. Vinny's voice always calms me down, Ooh. and I love to hear their perspective on things. They talk and educate about fat phobia and also about a lot of other important stuff. It's kind of enjoyable to hear them talk about their private li- life and dating, etc. Heart. Let's <laughs> say kind of. I think they probably mean it just you know casual. It's kind of interesting. Um, thank you. And. Uh, and that is from Kim Malia. 
Um, some of these, you know, I can't read out their usernames because it's like this next one is QQ, 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 B, 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 Y, Y, Y. Anyway, this next one, five stars. This podcast is full of great information. I really appreciate Vinny's sense of humor. They are also very compassionate and thoughtful about how they present information about fat phobia in our culture. They are a unique voice in the fat positive movement and their unique identities bring a great perspective to the movement. Thank you. And that is from United States of America. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you all for your reviews. And you know what? It's so heartwarming to see you all use my pronouns and my name, Vinny and they, them. Beautiful. Thank you. It's so affirming to read that really. And just one more, Australia, Vinny is the mutts nuts. <laughs> Laughy face. <laughs> I must have said, hey, could you want to go and do a, go do a review? And, and you can just say, they're the mutts nuts. <laughs> you know, that's all you need to say. And that's probably why that person's written that. Um, yes. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And let's get on to talking about what we're talking about today, which is when you're surrounded by fat phobes, by body bigots, by people who invest in weight stigma and anti-fat bias. Fun times, fun times. Um, so when I talk to people who are struggling with body image stuff, I will ask them some questions about what's going on in their brains currently, um, what's going into their brains, what they're being influenced by, what messages they're absorbing. Um, so, so when you know when people are asking me for advice, you know, like in coaching settings, I don't know why I'm really struggling with you know the question will be like I'm really struggling with my body, even though I've been doing this work for X Y Z amount of months or whatever, and. Uh, I'll say, okay, well, let's let's get our detective spyglass monocle thing on and let's do some detective work to work out what might be helping you and maybe what is not so helpful that's going on in your life. Um, and I'll ask them um, certain questions. Now, if you've done no work on body image or if you're new to the concept of anti-diet or fat positivity, then I can probably guess what's going on with the messages that you're receiving into that gorgeous brain of yours. You're probably getting a shit ton of dog shit into your brain. Um, dog shit being um, diet culture and fat phobia and lots of different unhelpful things um and just the average person on the street you know if someone you know just an average person who's you know, has no idea about anti-diet or fat phobia you know, I, I feel like i could just take their phone and be like let's have a look let's see what's going on with just like your phone or the people you're talking to or whatever and it's just going to be covered with loads of unhelpful messages it's just you know so often that's the way it goes and so here's my first thing for you so um i i'm, I'm giving you a challenge i'm giving you a challenge to open up your phone and go on social media whatever one you use most often and scroll through and notice you might want to write it down or something notice all the first the, the po posts that you're seeing when you first open the your social media, whatever it is. So are they messages that are going to support your journey to unlearning fat phobia? Is it a ton of diety stuff? Is it a ton of normative bodies? Like with Facebook, it could be, well, you know, it's just my friend saying, oh, look at my kids looking cute or whatever. Um, and, you know, is that you can decide is does that feel good for you? You know, maybe, maybe not. Um, uh, but, you know, is it that all your friends are have certain body types? Um, is it that they're like, oh, my God, I just tried this this keto diet and it's amazing. Uh, if it's on Instagram, you know, who are you following? on TikTok, etc. So is it a mix of, of, of harmful stuff and help, maybe some neutral stuff? Is it mostly positive stuff? Um, 
So take note of the first 10 posts. And so I did this with mine. So I opened my Instagram and this is what I saw on my Instagram, just to give you an, an idea of the stuff that's going into my brain. And this is totally random. No, 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 no fudging it. No kind of getting rid of things that didn't look, made me look good. Um, <laughs> so the first one was an anti-diet dietitian sharing something. The next was a, uh, a black body positive personal trainer um who's also a friend of mine um the next one was a kid playing with a chicken specifically it was a rooster uh the next post was a kitchen gadget next post was a funny post about rainbow washing and the office it was a scene from you know if anyone knows the office it's a scene from the office where michael um is teaching about diversity and he um what's that gay guy's name uh I can't remember his name. Anyway, there's one of the people in the office is gay. And so he says, come up here, um, gay person. I'll show you how diverse I am. And he forces himself onto the person and makes him kiss him. And, and it, but it's like really slow. And they're both like, uh, <laughs> the gay guy's like pulling his neck back, like, don't kiss me. And, and then Michael is like, I'm going to kiss you and show you how brave I am that I'm not a homophobe. And uh, yeah, anyway, this post was like, that's companies, you know, rainbow washing and the companies are Michael. And then the <laughs> the the, uh, the gay guy getting kissed was um, us consuming the, the post. Uh, anyway, next post was a black joy post. So it was a post about uh, black people doing gymnastics and having fun. Next one was a get ready with me post, which was, you know, uh, a fat black person trying on clothes. Next post was about gun banning guns. Next was another anti-diet dietitian. Then we have a funny post about a family with a, uh, se the setting is a family barbecue and someone gets on an ATV and uh, crashes into the barbecue. And next one, a fat cat meme. And finally, squishing jelly with spikes. One of those satisfying contents. So all of this stuff, and it's actually, that's, I think that's like 12 or 13 that I said. Um, all supports my mental health. A little bit of funny, a little bit of politics, joy, squishing, blah, blah, blah. Good, right? So is that what your social media is looking like? Something like that. If that's so great. If not, how can we change it up? And, and what a lot of people do is they're like, oh, great, I'm going to change it up. And they go and follow like, this is what people do. They'll go and follow people they'll go and follow just like three accounts and then you'll say how many people are you are you following on instagram and they'll be like three thousand and then you're like okay so those three accounts aren't going to be a drop in the bucket you know um and the three accounts that they follow are normally small fat people who were very conventionally attractive you know and so it's like oh is that really gonna help you know um, so you just have to go balls to the wall, you know? And uh, I say to people, just go and see who, um, someone you like, go and see who they follow. You can go and check out who I follow. If you don't mind also seeing, being exposed to pimple popping videos, um, satisfying, you know, like ASMR stuff and probably some gross medical things. <laughs> About that. And also then you've got all of the other, you know, uh, cool, uh, interesting content. Well, I mean, if you ask me, pimple popping is interesting too. Um, yeah, so you can just go and just go follow, 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 follow. That's a really good way just to go like blast. Um, and so it makes the message of this is what humans look like, like normalized. And also this is what human looks, who humans look like who are, who are joyful, who are um, successful, who are happy, who, who are in love who uh, have a full range of human emotions because a lot of times when we see um, people with marginalized identities being uh, portrayed, it's also always, uh, not always, but mostly tropes, right? The angry, the angry black woman, the sad sack fatty, the inspiration porn disabled person, you know? Um, and so you can learn just from, from from seeing these these accounts that human diversity is normal because really and um complex um because most of what we're seeing in the feeds is 
is just a load of like diet recipes, uh, people with aspirational bodies that you might want to look like, all that type of stuff. Or people who just, just don't make me make us feel good. I mean, I'm so ruthless, ruthless with that shit. If I give people two two chances, so if I see a post that I'm like, eh, I'll give them a pass. The second post that makes me go, eh, they're getting muted or blocked, depending on depending on uh, if they're like a, an actual friend, because I don't want to have an awkward conversation with someone <laughs> like my uncle or aunt or something. Why did you block me on Instagram? Ah, <laughs> I can't, can't be bothered with that, but yeah. So what else? Uh, things like what shows are you watching? And um, I mean, don't feel guilty for watching, you know, shit, silly, trashy type shows. If they bring you pleasure, and fucking go for it. But notice if the, if you feel triggered by it. And I know, what is it that that show, Love Island, um, British show, right? And it's on every single night every single night watching i'm guessing it's an hour an hour of content with really normative bodies that's going to have an effect so i'm not saying you can't watch love island i'm saying how about we also add in something that's good you know so it could be that you're watching love island and while you're watching love island because we have to be doing two things at the same time am i right yes me on on the instagrams and being on love island and then also going and following some some you know people who don't have thin white bodies or adding in a show which has diverse bodies in go and go and watch that someone what is it called again someone somebody somewhere um or you know if you're like me what i'm doing right now is i am uh binging on 90 days fiance happily ever ever after question mark and i swear how many hours is in a series it feels like there's like 75 hours in a series and it's like am i, am I ever going to get to the conclusion of this but also i really want to watch what happens because it's just so scandalous um but it's like taking up my whole life to watch a whole season of something because it's long right versus british tv it's like six episodes and you're done and you're like yeah that was you know but sometimes you do want a little bit longer anyway so um if I, if for example 90 day fiance was a show that i found triggering i might maybe say okay well i'm only going to watch three episodes tonight and then maybe i'm going to do something i'll put something in my brain watch something look at something which is um fat positive or just not you know scratch my bum or whatever um because it's not as helpful for me but it does bring me a certain level of joy you might say you know what this is just fucking me up watching love island every single night is fucking me up and it might be that you just have to just not watch it for a while maybe in you know six months time you feel a little bit better and you can try again you know or maybe not like i personally wouldn't watch love island even though i know that i'd like it just because it's a lot of normative bodies a lot over a long period of time so it's just quite risky for me you know and i do this for a job right and if someone like me can see that that, that is a risk um it might not be for you but i just want to point it out that that could be different so I would say here's another challenge if you want to if you're curious if you're curious do an evening or two when you're watching tv um and just count the number of normative bodies so that's thin white young um not disabled um if it's men um like muscular um cis straight so how many people do you see who fit the, those um, standards, those, those uh, have those privileges? And how many fat people do you see? How many wheelchair users or, or m mobility aid users? How many trans or queer folks? How many black indigenous or people of color? How many neurodiverse people are depicted, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? And I think, 
you may be surprised by how many ticks that you have in that thin white etc etc column and how little ticks you have in the other column and me too right because we just don't have that many shows with with um diversity um so yeah who do you spend time with how many of these people are fat positive anti-diet so your friends your family your colleagues um we are so influenced by the people that we spend time with and it's so hard not to um adopt that group think and not to want to be accepted by joining in when they're talking about diet stuff or anti-fat stuff it's so hard not to even if you're not joining in to in the back of your mind be like okay well this group of people they are not on board with my thinking even though i might not even told them what i think um and so maybe my thinking is wrong maybe me exploring this is wrong i don't know um so do you have anyone that you're your um that is kind of like an island in the middle of that i mean you might have everyone in your life that's that's anti-diet mm-hmm. for me um i have lots of people on the outskirts say for example neighbors you know the people that i see at the dog park people who you know maybe i don't really know their names and i don't know their politics in regards to anti-diet or whatever if i found out that they were pro diet and hated fat people then i probably wouldn't be able to talk to them because i'd be like fuck you um but those people could theoretically be anti-diet and i just i mean pro or pro or anti-diet i just don't know because you know you're like oh look at your dog oh it's so cute oh look at this silly little fluffy blah 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 and you just don't talk about that sometimes you might but uh so i might have people who are um pro diet and all that type of stuff in my life but the people with with relationship the people who I've got meaningful relationships with in my life absolutely there is not there's not one person who is not pro fat anti-diet everyone is that has the same politics as me and so um I because it's just like a for me it's like a fundamental um it's fundamental basic human rights stuff right and not to saying not to say that i would never be friends with someone who hates fat people um but they would be they'd have to be changing their mind pretty quick you know what i mean uh, I couldn't be friends with someone who was like, fat people are fucking disgusting. I never want to be fat. Like, I could not do that because it just goes against my values. You know, it goes against my values, my core, like, core values of, you know, respecting other people and all that type of jazz. Um, anyway, so how much are you surrounded by people who are like, oh, I don't want to be fat. Oh, I want to go on a diet, all that type of stuff. Um, and by the way i'm just you know asking the question just so that you can see and then we can talk about what to do with those people right um because it's hard it's h-a-r-r-r-r-r-r-d hard (laughs) because i mean shit there's so many reasons like what are you gonna do just blow up your life because these people are, are 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 fat phobes we're just going to say fuck you all and then you know have no connections and just die yeah that's not realistic right but it's you know just being aware of it is a a really good start uh some of the questions before we get into like the kind of the the core of of what we're talking about um where do you live what types of bodies do you see on the street uh or at work what's in your closet is it a bunch of things that don't fit does it make you feel good clothes that's you know covered in shit stains and holes or you know uh is it you know things that you like oh yeah i feel okay in that or even maybe oh i feel good in that i know that's not accessible for a lot of people but um what are you feeling when you open your closet what are you spending your money on are you spending your money on subscriptions to things that don't make you feel good like that gym down the road that advertises how much how many calories you'll burn if you go in there that's what that's me there's a gym on my street outside in huge letters saying you're going to burn 600 
million calories if you come in here and breathe the air for 12 seconds. And I'm like, well, how the fuck can you say that? Obviously, I'm exaggerating. That's not what they say. Uh, but the, it, it's just lies. How can they say that people are going to burn X amount of calories? And why, 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 and I know why, Like, but I'm like, why would I care about? I don't care about that. Why not have a sign saying, you're going to come in here and we're going to have so much fucking fun? Shit, man, I'd be in there. But no, I see them doing these, these wild workouts because they want to burn calories, presumably, to be thin. And I'm just like, no, my, 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 my. So, yeah. I don't give them my money at all. Okay, so um, I have a post on the Instagrams that I posted this week, which is how to protect yourself from fat phobia. And so... Um, this is what we're going to do if we are surrounded by fat phobe and fat phobes and, and fat phobia is everywhere rude and by the way you know i mentioned like everyone who i'm have you know genuine connections with in my life um are fat positive it's taken years it's taken years and it's only a kind of n not i'd say new newish thing in the last maybe four years um yeah 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 yeah, that's right, yeah. And before, I would have had, because for the many different reasons that we're going to discuss, I would have had people who don't have the same beliefs as me in my life, um, who had beliefs that were hurtful towards me, um, because fat phobia is everywhere. Um, yeah. So, so what's a fatty got to do to protect themselves from this fucked up fat phobic society? Uh, something that I teach is called remove, reduce, and protect. So the gold star is can you remove that source of fat phobia from your life if possible? And a big asterisk all over this. This is often not pos possible. Say if it's, you know, you've got in your closet a goal outfit. Even something like that, you know, I'll, I'll say get rid of it, but that might not even be that easy because you're holding on to it for many different reasons of you know hope and and it's really sad to get rid of that goal outfit so maybe um you can if you've got a goal outfit in your in your wardrobe that you see every day that's like oh whispering to you oh you're so fat you're a piece of shit you don't fit into me oh what a loser <laughs> that you know that that's what you think when you see that outfit um, maybe you can just put it at the back of the closet. Maybe you can uh, put it under your bed, put it in a box and, you know, put it in the basement or attic or, you know, bury in a hole or whatever. You don't have to get rid of it. Um, but the, that's like the gold star. If we can get rid of something, great. And if that's an option, great. So um, it could be really supportive could be really supportive for our mental health not always and it's not always an option right now and or could take time so an example your boss is a raging fat phobe you probably don't want to send them an email email saying hey i've decided i ain't take, talking to you anymore because you're a bell end not if you want to keep your job anyway <laughs> But you can perhaps work towards finding a new job if that's an option for you. You can work towards, you know, documenting the the instances of, of bigotry that you're experiencing and then, you know, presenting it to HR if that's an option. But there's lots of if, 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 um, you know, and, and as well, thinking about the power dynamics. What power dynamics are at play? So here's another example. You uh, are a single parent and you are, are struggling financially and so you're living with your mum and your mum is just not great. But she supports you financially. She helps you out with childcare as well. She is not reasonable. And so is it going to be helpful for you to say hey mum can you uh, not ever talk about diets again knowing that say if your mum's volatile knowing that your mum could say get out of my house I'm not going to help you anymore that's probably you know not the best for you and so when I say like the gold star is remove big asterisks it's not always the best decision for you 
Um, but as we move on in this journey, we'll start to notice that um, things do shift and those sources of fat phobia are removed from our lives um, in ways that feel good to us. Or we might decide, you know what, um, I'm just going to put up with, with grandma saying, I look fat because I only see her once a year and she's probably going to be dead soon. You know, you might, you might say, you know what, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And you might just say no, but a lot of times it is worth it if possible. So if you can't remove, the next thing to do is reduce. So we've got remove, reduce and protect. So the next thing we do is reduce. So for example, do you need to spend all day Sunday with your fat phobic family? How about you spend just three hours instead of six? The, the less exposure, the less chance that Uncle Barry is going to comment about how much weight you've put on. Um, and going back to that TV show, TV shows that you like to watch, would it be helpful for your mental health to reduce how long you spend watching, even temporarily? Um, so what can we do to, do to reduce the exposure? Now, protect. So, sometimes neither of those is possible. If we go back to the work example, if you have to work nine to five, sitting next to Susan, who is a diet culture and fat phobia vo vortex, then the best thing that you can do is try to protect yourself from her. If there's nothing else that you can do, you can't say to your boss, shut up, whatever, um, you know, Susan's being a bell end again. Um, and, you know, Susan's telling you all about her new diet where you put chili peppers up your bum and, and snort dust. Um, can you be browsing fat positive content while she does that? Can you put earphones in for a very important call that you're getting? Um, can you incorporate, reduce and protect together? So can you step away from your desk when Susan's like really getting on your flaps? You'd be like, oh, Susan, I just need to go and do a poo. So I'll see you in a minute. Um, Susan might be like, I'll come with you. I'll tell you about this new diet. It's great. He's like, shut up, Susan. Um, yeah, so it could be that you're, you're putting on, you put on your earphones and you start listening to an episode of Fierce Fatty Podcast. It could be that you, you're in a Facebook group and you go and make, make a post saying, you never guess what, Susan sat here talking about this and it just really is fucking getting on my tits. Um, so remove, reduce, protect. And most of what we're doing is protecting because weight bias is systemic, right? Like an example, an example of going to the doctors, um, we cannot control, even if we say before we go and we repeat to the doctor, hey, don't talk about weight. We can't control what that person does. And we we've made the, the decision to go and expose ourselves to potentially life endangering fat phobia um and uh they're going to be fat phobic anyway not always but you know that's the risk so what we can do is to do a little bit of protection self-care you know do what we can when we do have um, you know all the stars align and we can can do reduce and remove and that's great so I want to talk about boundaries now this could be how we remove people from our life maybe we don't who knows I'm not saying that boundaries means that you're gonna cut people from your life but sometimes that happens sometimes it doesn't um, and boundaries really I, I, I talk about boundaries a lot and um, they really are an act of love and I think about when I was not a boundaried person, I was just like in my head all the time being like, oh, that person's such a dickhead. I can't believe they did that or said that and blah, 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 blah. Um, and I can't believe that they think that's a, a, appropriate. I can't believe that they were 20 minutes late and they didn't even say sorry. I hate them so much, you know, and I would never say, hey, uh, hey, I'm not cool with you being 20 minutes late for our lunch or whatever. Um, because I'd be terrified that they'd be like, okay, well, fuck you. I never want to be your friend again. And then I'll be like, sad. Because <laughs> you, know, you have to be courageous to say, hey, that thing doesn't feel good for me. 
Um, and by not setting boundaries, I was making it so people could not get close to me. They had no chance, did they? I'm there saying, oh, hi, nice, so nice to see you in my head thinking, fucking idiots, 20 minutes late. And they think they're building a nice relationship with me and I'm like secretly hating them. It's, if they had that gift of me saying, hey, that really actually bothers me that you're 20 minutes late. Um, then they could either adjust their behavior or whatever. We could come up with some solution or they could just be like, ah, I'm not bothered. I'm going to be 20 minutes late and I can choose to do that with that what I want, you know, whether that be saying, okay, well, fine, I like you enough and it's not that big of a deal to me or, or actually it is a big deal to me and I, I'm not really into it. Um, so not everyone can set boundaries. Um, in regards to there being a power imbalance like we talked about before, nor is it always appropriate. Um, you know, I've given the examples before of, of that girl slapping me at that party because she thought it was a great way to display what the, the phrase bitch slap meant. Um, and then she saw me again in the street and slapped my bum. And that, dis and that second time I decided not to reinforce my boundary because I thought, you're dead to me, I'm never gonna see you again, <laughs> right? Um, Sometimes there's no there's no way to get out of setting a boundary. So in that same example, girl slaps me at party, um, and immediately I had to say, "Do not ever do that to me again," because it was so egregious. Um, so yeah, so just that kind of big caveat. And, and if you don't set boundaries, please, you're not you're not. Uh, less than for not setting boundaries it is so hard <laughs> it's so hard why do we have to be why do we have to be doing communicating with other people <laughs> why why can't they just read our minds right you know come on now um and people have known you potentially for years as someone who loves a bit of diet talk who loves talking about how you know they want to lose weight and not be fat and la 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 and so um this is this is a process if you want to say to people hey um can we not talk about diet stuff anymore it's it's gonna maybe be a shock for people um and be difficult and so this is what i say this is the way that i like to approach it is um saying can you help me with something so this is for people who you care about who you want a relationship with who you want to be open and honest with when you set boundaries that's not always the case right it could be just some you know it could just be susan at work and you're like susan listen can you not talk about that anymore um but when it's someone that i i care about i'll say hey i'm wondering can i have your help help on something and they'll say yes you know when someone says can i have your help yes oh my goodness i would love to help i'm I'm doing this thing where I'm unlearning all of the kind of unhelpful fat phobia and diet stuff that I've learned. I've realized that it's really affecting my mental health. And what I've recognized is that when I hear people talking about food or dieting or, or their weight, it's really triggering for me. Um, so I'm wondering if you, if you can, uh, if I can get your help and you can avoid talking about those things while I'm around. That's my favorite go-to of, you know, hey, can I help? Can, can, can I get some help? And so you're not saying, hey, listen up here, you are a giant turd. And you are a bad person because you talk about diets. Which is, people might hear you say that anyway, even if you don't say that. Um, and I always thought that saying to someone hey can you not do that meant that they were probably going to flip a table they were probably going to be like what the fuck who do you think you are to ask me like i i would be so like or if they didn't say that they'd be leaving going like yeah right I'm never going to do that Phew. who do they think <laughs> you know that type of thing um but guess what <laughs> people were just like oh okay not everyone, but I'd say a good 95% people are like, oh, okay, can you tell me more about that? And I'm like, oh, because I really thought that they were gonna be like, fuck you, you're dead to me. 
and the more that I practiced it, the more I was like, oh, people, a lot of them are actually very kind. And a lot of them want to do good by me. Wow, that's really nice to hear. Wow, we can strengthen our relationship. Wow, we have a really good relationship now. Whereas before I secretly hated them because they were doing normal things that you know they didn't know bothered me. Um, so here's the thing, you'll do that first thing and then you're like, whew, that was fucking hard, but it went well. You know, they're probably never going to um, say diet cut through things again and of course the next time you see them they would have forgotten that conversation maybe not forgotten it but it, they'll just slip up no fault of their own well you know whatever um they'll slip up same with me with my pronouns right the people will just slip up the the way they react when they the, what you need to do and the way they react uh, when they slip up is a really good indicator of of who they are and so um you just taking the 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 stance of how when someone um gets my pronouns wrong um i will just say oh um they or i'll just say oh yeah and non-binary something like that i'll just say just simple as that no kind of like hey that really blah blah blah, blah unless they're being really you know rude about it um and it's just not a big deal so you could say someone's like oh my god have you tried this new diet and you're like oh hey you remember um i'm not talking about diets and they're like, oh yeah. Because remember, they might have known you for years as someone who likes talking about diets. So it's gonna take time for them to get used to it. Um, and so you might have to do this a few times. It's up to you if you wanna do it at all or how long you wanna do it for. You might say, do you know what? Um, I'm just gonna keep doing it until they get it because there's the, they're a big part of my life and I'm just gonna keep helping them understand until they get it. It could be that you know, you're know you like, okay, well, shit, man, I've seen this person five times now, every single time I've had to say this, I'm going to reduce the amount of contact with them or I might even choose to remove them from my life eventually, maybe, who knows? Um, so how this is like played out for me in real life, uh, an example of someone who I chose to remove from my life is someone I gave many chances to and they're a core, mem core member of my family and when it became clear that they had no intention of not being a bigot that's when I said that's you know unfortunately that's the end of our relationship and um, and so my tolerance level was you know a certain amount but then when they were like I don't care about hurting your feelings then I was like okay well there's nothing to work with there <laughs> so see you later and that happened maybe three three years ago so it's been so nice not having them in my life because they just weren't very they didn't care about yeah, they didn't care about my feelings or wanting to be close to me they cared about um, their own beliefs right and and that was difficult and that was years and years and years in the making because there was lots of different issues at play right um, and now let's think of someone like my mum who had spent her whole life in diet culture and fat phobia it took time and many times me saying hey sometimes it took longer because we don't you know she lives in Ireland and I'm here in Vancouver and um, I maybe wouldn't see her and uh, you know speak to her on the phone long enough for it to come up but then when I would see her in person it would be triggered more because you know maybe she'd see me eating food or maybe she'd see me wearing clothes and then that's the opportunities where she might say things and so um, it took a while and now she is great she is you know how people people say all the time well i can't change my mum i can't change my granddad they're old and i'm like what the that's got nothing to do with anything do people who are older not have capacity for kindness to learn things <laughs> i don't think so i think that's kind of ages ages to, to suggest that just because someone has you know spent seven decades in this thing that they have no capacity to change they do yes it's going to be harder but 
there are many people who are older who are on the front lines of 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 changing the way that we think about identity and um advocating for others so kind of just writing off your parents or your grandparents because they're old and they won't get it i don't think is very fair to them and if they're using that excuse of i'm old i don't get it well sorry sorry mum there's lots of people who do get it and you know my mum's one one of the examples my mum's 70 right um so yeah there's a that, there's a lady that i talk to i uh, look after her dog sometimes she's 70 she's the most for <laughs> she's so forward thinking like and she's like how can people think like this and that and i'm like yeah right so and there's young people who are all the opposite who will have really fucked up views so i really don't think age has got a huge amount to play with it um and i don't think it's appropriate to just give older people a pass because of their age and also recognizing there could be many cultural differences that make it more difficult right because you know um it could be that the you don't never talk back to your elders in your culture or your community Mm -hmm. and that that is really just a no-go and that's where it comes with a big asterisk again of it might not always be appropriate or the best time um because say if you wanted to set uh a boundary with a you know your auntie or whatever and if you did that it would mean that your mum would disown you and you you know everyone in your family would be talking about you and da 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 is that going to be supporting your mental health probably maybe not you know and so maybe it is better for your mental health to see auntie who says oh look how fat you are and then go and be like oh thanks auntie see you later and go listen to you know a fat positive podcast go read a fat positive book not see auntie as much you know so all of this stuff is a big kind of but (laughs) who knows (laughs) who who knows and the other thing is with boundaries sometimes you have you can have really rigid boundaries and say no absolutely not someone does this and that is a hard kind of like no i'm not into it um and and sometimes you could have really rigid boundaries that can soften sometimes because uh for many different reasons uh and so you can have more flexible boundaries um and here's the thing though is i i think if we're going to be setting boundaries if we can not consistently not stick to them you know so so if you say hey listen uh mum if you talk about diets i'm gonna have to leave and then mum talks about diets and you don't ever leave then I think that it's counterintuitive to, to, to even say the boundary in the first place because what mum is hearing is that they're not serious when they say this they're not serious and so I'm never going to take them seriously and in fact um, I can just you know walk all over that quote boundary because it's just it's just a it's a, just a, a, a wish and a hope um, versus gonna you know going to follow through with it um but then again something might come up where you can't for whatever reason so so again it's like big caveat with that whatever you do to try and survive fat phobia is great whatever that looks like if you were if you're a fat person and you were alive and you were you've survived fat phobia for this long it's you do, you've done it right you're you're doing it and there are options that we can um, explore which might make it even better that might be even more helpful and there is always going to be times where you're like right okay next time someone says this i'm gonna say you know studies show this and la 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 and then it happens and you're like "Uh uh-huh yeah i would love to know more about your diet because you're in the moment and then all of a sudden all that information that you've got in your brain is you know just flying off somewhere else because you're in a Uh, a moment of panic and all you can do is just nod and agree and that's fine too really so don't don't be uh getting down on yourself if that's what you have to do and also you don't have to be verbally or written uh resisting in that way you can resist fat phobia and diet culture 
in many ways. Example, you're out with your friends. They're all like, oh my God, I'm going to have a salad. You're at, you're at dinner. I'm just going to have a salad. Oh, I couldn't possibly eat anything else. But yeah, oh my God, me too. I'm being so greedy today. I I, uh, uh, I looked at some sugar and it, it, the osmosis of the sugar went into my brain. And I'm sure I've put on loads of weight because of it. Yes, yeah, so the other friends is like, oh my God, yeah. All I want is just some carrots. And you could say nothing and be like, yeah, actually, um, I'll have some uh, uh, some dinner, you know, I'll have something that's not a salad. Um, and that can be incredible. That could be so brave in the face of that. Or you could just not say anything, not engage. That too is incredible. And I think about, you know, like the, the often the ways that fat people, you know, the kind of like the, the common things that people do when they're learning um, to, to accept their bodies, you know, wear a bikini or, you know, eat donuts or whatever. And I, I feel like, you know, it's resistance, right? That's what I see that as, a, as an act of resistance. I'm going to do this thing anyway, even though you are shaming me indirectly because you're not saying oh you're so fat and you shouldn't eat a salad I'm not going to accept that shame and so that could be what you're doing and it could be that you're not even doing it like in front of your friends you go home and you know you order the salad then because you're under so much pressure to only eat a salad and then you go home and allow yourself to eat what you really wanted to eat you know it doesn't have to be in front of people it could be something that you do on your own. And that is incredible too. Any way that you can resist, and you don't have to resist, by the way, because it's not safe. A lot of times it's not safe. Sometimes you have to play along, you know. And an example is is going to the doctors and they say, hey, you need to do this and that, and or we're not gonna give you health care. And you could just be like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You might even have you might even um, you know, go on a diet because you have to, because the doctor says so, because they're gonna deny um health care to you unless you do this thing. You might have to. But your act of resistance in that could be just be like, you know what, well, I'm not gonna in- I'm gonna work to not internalize all of this shame that this doctor's trying to give me. So Cheryl, do you remember? I don't know if you remember. I just saw this recently on on Facebook. An update from um, there was a trigger warning. I'm going to talk talk about medical fat phobia, an egregious case. No, don't worry, no one died. Um, coming up, if, it, if that doesn't feel good, skip forward five minutes um, or towards the end of the episode. Um, there was a case like a, it feels like it was about a year ago. There was a video of this girl. And she says, I just got out of the doctors and she was sobbing. She was really crying. Um, and the doctor had said to her, uh, she had been really sick. She's not been able to eat anything because she'd been really sick, couldn't keep anything down. And she'd lost lots of weight. She was still fat though. And the doctor says, it's probably a good thing that you've not been able to eat anything because you've lost weight. And so she went out into her car and then she went actually went back into the doctor's surgery and confronted the guy and said that was fucked up and he said sorry you can't handle my jokes anyway she posted that video on i think originally tiktok and then um, also instagram it blew up and um lots of people were like you deserve care go for it um please keep going to find and find another doctor she did she resisted she took that shame and said it's not for me went to another doctor turns out she had stage three um i don't know if it was bowel cancer she had cancer basically stage three because it was to do with her stomach is what the issues was see she had surgery and she's she's recovering um if that should never have happened it happens all the time there are so many deaths at the hands of doctors who are fat phobic she was able to resist 
because she posted that video and got lots of support she probably got a lot of hate as well obviously um and for whatever reason she was able to get another doctor and her persistence saved her life so yeah i don't know why i'm 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 i'm, I'm telling this story but um i just saw that yesterday and i was like oh shit i remember her and and oh and that's what happened she had fucking cancer um so yeah if you can if you can show resistance in any way and it could have been that that in that first doctor she just said yeah oh yeah it is a good thing that i'm thin now can you do some tests on me please <laughs> you know and that could have been the outcome and then the the tests were done and she she could they could discover what was wrong with her um obviously that didn't happen but um and in no way is it her fault at all you know in case anyone you know, if that's coming across like she should have done this you know she should never have had to experience that ever 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 if she had a thin body she would have had that diagnosed ages before because she'd been suffering for i think she said five to seven years because she mentioned something about early 20s and she said she was 27 um and yeah so she would been suffering for years if a thin person had lost a lot of weight and someone's and they said oh i've not uh, i'm losing loads of weight i can't eat the doctor would say oh sounds like something is not right fat person they say good it's probably a good thing um yeah so resistance could be life-saving for for many people and uh oh i just you know big big breath there because it's, it's feeling kind of it's feeling kind of a lot that you know knowing that that type of stuff um and also you deserve you deserve we all deserve to live in an environment where where we are free from stigma bigotry marginalization all of that stuff you deserve to be able to watch patty cakes and dumpling and somebody somewhere and just have live a happy fatty life without having to come across all of this bullshit um but uh it's not where we're at right now unfortunately oh ending on such a shit note <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry um yeah so anyway well um if you if you want to learn more about all of this stuff dealing with this stuff so i have fierce fatty academy um i am i've not revealed this to anyone yet but i will be changing the way that i do fierce fatty academy so um the next time i launch fierce fatty academy uh it will be as a self-study program and so it's going to be 50 percent off because it's going to be self-study so all the materials are there and um so it means that you, you don't get calls with me but you get everything and all of the previous calls like a few years of calls in there so um yeah so it's got so because of that it's going to be 50 percent off so that's coming up i'll let you know when that happens uh, i'm not sure when yet but um it's in my brain to do that um yeah and i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i will see you in a while alligator remember to stay fierce fatty goodbye thanks for listening to the episode and if you feel ready to get serious about this work and want to know when the doors open to fierce fatty academy which is my signature program where i teach all about how to overcome your fat phobic beliefs and learn to love your fat body then go to fiercefatty.com forward slash waitlist again that is fiercefatty.com forward slash waitlist to get your name on the waitlist for when Fierce Fatty Academy, my signature program, opens. <laughs>